Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically welcome back to my Masterclass series, which goes above and beyond my regular tank reviews to show you special builds that have helped me hit whole new milestones for myself inside the tanks. Today, we're going to be looking at the Char Future for a tier 9 French reward medium tank with a fabulous autoloader, 7.5 degrees of gun depression. You know what, I'm going to start the video with the conclusion. This tank is like a Batch Hat 25T that actually doesn't suck in 2023. So how has the Char Future 4 been performing over the last few months on the European server? Well, it has the sixth best win ratio of any of the tier 9 medium tanks. Although, when we think about it, it's only the Kunzerpanzer as a reward vehicle that has a worse win ratio. So it's not exactly performing incredibly well, but it's not performing badly. And I think that's because this tank actually has a very high skill ceiling. So if you're a very good player, then if if you set the Char Future 4 up well and you play it well, you're going to have exceedingly good results. And I think that it's dragged down by the average and the below average players who probably just don't have the skill set to be able to make this thing work. The best way to get you up to speed with some kind of a refresher course on the uh, Char Future 4 is to compare it to a tier 10 medium tank. It's not really too comparable to its tier 9 counterpart, the uh, Bat Chatillon 25 TAP. And while you could compare it to something like a Proto Tipu Standard B, or alternatively, you could compare it to a Skoda T50, I feel like the best way to get to show you how good the Char Future 4 is is to actually match it up against a higher tier medium tank. So first up, DPM. It's not great. And that's because although these vehicles have the same reload time, the Char Future 4 has a four round 105 millimeter with a much longer intraclip reload. This is one of the weakest things about the Char Future 4 is it has a four second intraclip reload, which means this thing never really truly feels like an autoloader. It kind of feels like it's halfway between a single shot tank and an autoloader in that regard. And the Bat Chat 25T stomps this thing into the ground with regards to that, delivering 1,950 in less than 11 seconds, whereas the Char Future 4, it takes 12 seconds from the first shot to deal 1,560. But the Char Future 4 just does this damage so much more reliably. With great penetration, 264, uh, which is higher than the Bat Chat, even though it's the higher tier tank. It's still got 330 millimeters of heat, which is fabulous as well. And when we take a look at the gun handling, look at the accuracy, 0.34 base compared to the Bat Chat, half a second less off the aim time. And while its gun handling isn't as good, remember that the Char Future 4 has that terrible intraclip reload. And so it's the accuracy that really counts. It's making your shots uh, hit the target. Uh, as, and many people will know that the Bat Chat 25T at tier 10, that doesn't happen all the time unless you're in close quarters combat. And so the Char Future 4, it just has all of these statistics in right areas. And it's weird to think about it, but its weaknesses are kind of made up for by its strengths. And its weaknesses also allow it to not have to try and amplify them and to invest in statistics in other areas of the tank, which can amplify those advantages in itself. And I'll explain more of this in just a second. One of the massive advantages over the Char Future 4 compared to the Bat Chat is the 7.5 degrees of gun depression. I cannot state how much better 7.5 degrees is than 6. 6 just makes you feel so awkward on a ridgeline. 7.5, you can work so many more positions. Think about the difference between something like an Object 140 and its predecessor, the T-54, or maybe something like an IS-7. It's just so much more flexible. And trust me, when you try the Char Future 4, it feels like it's this amazing light tank, medium tank, assassin, sniper hybrid that can also work a ridgeline. I should also mention that this vehicle has 32 rounds of ammunition rather than the Bat Chat's 30, which means that it's much less likely this thing is going to run out earlier on in the battle. Now onto the mobility of the vehicle. It's not incredible news here, but it's not terrible news here. The power to weight is good. 23 is not bad, but it's definitely not like a Bat Chat. And its ground resistances are identical, so this, that means this thing does feel rather sluggish compared to a Bat Chat at least, but not sluggish compared to other medium tanks. One thing I'd like to stress about this vehicle is how horrible the traverse speeds feel. 30 degrees on the turret and 36 degrees on the tank. You want to try and do everything you can to improve these, or you're going to kind of be turning a bit like a boat. And it's a bit of a joke that the Bat Chat kind of feels like a bit of a drag car at tier 10, and this thing is even worse. Mobility-wise, all in all, ah, it could be better, but it's not terrible for the Char Future 4, and it's a lot faster than a lot of other medium tanks. 
And especially when we take a look at this thing's armor. 55 on the front, 40 on the side, but 140 on the turret and 90 on the side of the turret. It means that the Char Future 4's armor is actually pretty darn good. Take a look at this. When we're not using our gun depression at all, we still have about 190 millimeters across quite a lot of the front of the turret. And if you are using your gun depression, this armor now goes up to 224. So that's a 50-50 bounce against an IS-3 for an example. And because you're at tier 9 and not tier 10, you are getting many more matchups like that. And with the angling on the upper part of the hull and the 40 millimeters of armor down the side, unless you're getting shot by 120 millimeter caliber guns, this thing ricochets way more than it actually should and it's a huge advantage of the Char Future 4 compared to something like the Batch Hat 25T that you're actually pulling off those miracle ricochets a lot more often than you actually uh, you probably should be. Add to this a good old slab of hit points 1750 only 50 less than the Batch Hat and that gets a big thumbs up from me as well. You might notice that the track repair time is 6.97 and the reason for that is is because the Char Future 4 actually gets a free large repair kit that repairs in 15% faster rather than 10% faster like all of the other large repair kits and you never have to pay for it so it's a brilliant thing to have for a free to play player. So the camera rating of this vehicle is not bad at all but one thing that does suck is the 380 meters view range and you're gonna have to improve that significantly and one way to do that is with crew skills the char future 4 is not a tank which you can afford to have a bad crew on otherwise you are going to end up having pretty poor results it's a high pressure crew and accordingly i'd recommend that you get a zero skill crew minimum on this tank now, luckily, it uses the same crew loadout as your Batch at 25T, so if you've got the Tier 10 French Tech Tree Medium Tank, it's going to work very well in here. Commander-wise, focus on Situation Awareness, Recon, Camo. You kind of probably still need repairs, but after Camo in this tank, and then focus on things like Jack of All Trades. Interestingly enough, the Commander is also the loader, so if you want to get yourself safe stowage or maybe Adrenaline Rush, then that's optional, or Eagle Eye. Considering how much pressure there is and how many different crew skills you want, it could be a little bit tricky. Gunner-wise, so many different skills I'd like. I'd like safe stowage, but I'd also like dead eye because it is an autoloader and you want to be able to uh, increase the chance of critting your opponent. I want to have designated target because I sometimes play like a scout. I want to have snapshot to be able to improve that poor gun handling. I want to have concealment. I want to have repairs and even firefighting because I'm going to use a premium consumable on this tank. Driver-wise, once again, preventative maintenance to try and stop fires. Concealment, off-road driving, clutch braking to stop this thing behaving like a drag car, a smooth ride to try and improve the gun handling. Uh, not gun handling, yeah, the gun handling on the move. But yeah, probably not controlled impact on a tank like this. You definitely want, don't want to be ramming your opponents. Equipment-wise on this tank, I think it's really nice and simple. I have two builds. One is vents, coated optics, and vert stabs. And you might be thinking, whoa, you're using coated optics on a medium tank? Yeah, it's because that 380 base view range. There is one way to get around this, and that is to have Brothers in Arms, Situational Awareness, Recon, a premium consumable, and then Bond Vents. And if you do that, you can actually get to 445 meters view range, which might mean that you should take a Commander's Vision System instead of Coated Optics. However, that will require you to have Bond Vents, and I don't think that that should be the standard thing to have for, um, for just playing the game, right? And this build will work just as well free to play as it will pay to win. My second build on this tank, I'm going to drop the vert stabs and I'm going to use the vision system inside the spotting slot on this tank. And that will really, really help for those bushy maps like Malinovka or Prokhorovka. And it'll allow you to be able to get more shots off. And you don't really need vertical stabilizers on this tank because of how long its intra-clip reload is. So field mods. This is where it can be a little bit tricky. The first one is a bit of a toss up and it's down to your preference. I personally am taking the traverse speeds on the turret and the mob and um, on my hull. Now, keep in mind, this will make it so that if I'm Amaract, I will have a horrible magazine reload. And it will also mean that when my gun is damaged, it's going to be very inaccurate. However, with the free large repair kit, it doesn't feel too punishing with the gun. Often, it's I'm going to be able to repair it if I get Amaract at the same time or if I, if I lose my tracks at the same time. It's not really too much of a big deal. And I feel like improving the traverse speed stops this thing from feeling like a boat. Even with the improvement, I still only get 48 degrees on the hull. And if we look at the turret, I'm still only getting 35 degrees turret traverse per second. So I would... 
uh, consider either not taking this one or taking the um, the improved reverse speed. Next up, simple. Take the uh, the accuracy. The next one, I'm going to take anti-reflective headlights coating because you've got to improve the camera rating. And I don't really feel this, this tank's got an amazing suspension repair speed already. And I'm willing to sacrifice the reverse speed on this tank. And then this is the tricky one. Uh, well, not tricky there. Take scouting, scouting, scouting for that slot mandatory on this vehicle but for the final one do you take breech tweaking or do you take new aiming gears i personally take the breech tweaking and here's why this tank has such a long intra clip reload and it's got really really good aim time and accuracy that i i don't feel that it's too punishing to make the aiming time worse and because it's intra clip reload is four seconds i can't burst the damage out anyway and so the bloom after firing a shell doesn't really matter However, by taking breach tweaking, you can actually shave two whole seconds off the reload of this vehicle. And reloading in 34 seconds is way better than 36. And it makes it feel less punishing when you only fire one or two shots than you want to reload the entire magazine. And unlike the Bat Chat 25T, where I take the new aiming gears to make sure I can dump out the magazine as accurate as possible, the chart doesn't have to do that, which actually kind of makes up for the, the DPM disparity between the two tanks. And something new for this video is that from now on, hopefully, if I remember, I will be linking to my builds that I suggest in the video using the awesome Tanks GG website. So check that out in the description down below. Hopefully I remember. Anyway, I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's put this tank through its paces on the battlefield. So here we go, we're rolling out on Muravanka and it should be absolutely no surprise that I decided to drop the vertical stabilizers and to use the commander's vision system on this map. It always baffles me when I do these masterclass videos that people think, oh, QB using commander's vision system on a medium tank. Dude, it's it's allowed me to propel my win rate and to propel my, uh, my combines massively in 2022. And remember, I'm not going to be using the vision system on every single map, probably only about a third of them, where really you want to be able to have that extra view range. But when you want to outspot a 1390 as they're crossing, or when you want to end up in these bushes and really dig players out, it really will enable you to, for example, double your team's light tanks. And on a map like Muravanka, that's got to be one of the most important things for you to do as a player, right? Oh no! Disaster as we bounce off the side of the 1390s turret. Was hoping they were not going to have any light tanks in this game. But right now, we are overloading the woods. And consequently, that means that the west is going to be lost. And so we've got to try and get through, try and support. We can use these bushes to be able to get through here. Got to be careful though. If we start absolutely blazing away, uh, we are probably going to get caught. And we even managed to get spotted in this situation. As the 1390s actually managed to cross... I want to try and crest up here to see if we can finish off the 1390. And that one didn't bounce off their turret. So we shut down the French light tank. And we see that the enemy team are already starting to plan on escaping. Bit of a misplay there by me as I do get caught by the Char Future 4. I was expecting those medium tanks to run away a little bit. And ah, it just shows you that they're going all the way towards the edge of the map. And this is again where the coated optics and the vision system will start to pay dividends. Look at that, 1,600 spotting against the Leopard, 600 assistance against the Char. And maybe if I wasn't using the vision system here, both of those players might have been able to escape. It's allowing me to plow forwards. I'm not spotted against the T95. I can work my way towards this bush. In fact, you know what? I'm actually going to just play for the team and get forwards. I probably should have stopped in that situation. I'm quite surprised the T95 didn't see me uh, until I was probably about 100 meters away from their vehicle. But ah, maybe they weren't focused on having vision on that vehicle. And I got 30% camo on the move, as I showed from all of the field mods. It's amazing how this vehicle can play like a light tank. The Bat Chat, uh, before the tier 10 light tanks, was almost the ultimate scout tank inside the game. These days, however, the best scout tanks are clearly the tier 10 light vehicles like the Manticore. But the Char Future 4 can actually manage to play like a second rate light tank. And with the customization you can get with two sets of equipment, not even that much of a second rate. This is why I just love this vehicle. Just waiting for him to be 445 meters away from me so he won't spot me even if I fire, even if he's got huge view range. The mag just feels really punishing when you get to uh, unload at any, kind of, any kinds of distance. If you're at long range, the gun feels good. If you're at short range, the gun feels good. 
it's just so nice to have an autoloader that is also accurate. With the build that I have on this vehicle, I'm getting my accuracy down to roughly about 0.3. Uh, in addition to the, the premium consumable. Uh, and that's just absolutely savage. This tank just feels so darn consistent. And I really don't have too much of a problem with the roughly about the 32 seconds reload that I do end up having on this tank. Because you've got four rounds, 405 millimeter rounds. So in this kind of a situation, it's about getting still involved into the game. We're barely up, and I don't want these players to be able to cap out. But I make a bit of a misplay here. I allow the Char Future 4 up. Is he going to go all in against me? He actually bounces one of his shells as we did angle our armor. He's thinking about going for some more, and he does. I'm going to put one round into him, and they decide to back off as that ricochet uh, did end up meaning they couldn't be able to shut me down in a single mag or in that engagement. And the T-49 that manages to finish him off. And oh dear, starting to look a little bit ugly for us. But at least we're not going to tunnel vision, hopefully aim for this leopard here. Shut them down right towards the side. And this is where just the 7.5 degrees of gun depression feels so lovely on these little ridge lines. You know, if there's a... Everyone out there who's played the Object 140 compared to something like a, a T-62A or maybe compared to an IS-7. Seven. seven degrees feels so much better than six. And to have seven and a half degrees of gun depression on the Char Future 4 instead of the, the, the six degrees that you get on the Bat Chat, oh, it just feels like they're two different tanks. So in this situation, it's just about us hanging in the pocket, spotting out our opponents, keeping our team in it, and using the ridge line and a little bit of mobility to uh, keep out of harm's way. Or, uh, I'm, I'm definitely in harm's way. I mean, the 260 can see me. But I think by just going backwards and forwards and only exposing a small amount of my turret, it can make your, I can make myself very annoying for that tier 10 Soviet reward vehicle. And with that tracking on the 60TP, we are nearly up to 4,000 assistants. And with three shells left, that's enough to deal with the VZ-55. Uh, this might be a... Um, a little bit of a, a risk, a little bit of danger, but I'm hoping the VZ-55 is going for the T-49. And this is where the Char Future 4 still feels as if it can be this big, meaty assassin. If I'm in another Tier 9 medium, I'd probably still do the same thing going after this VZ-55. This one just feels so consistent for it. But again, the, the intra-clip reload looks awful. However, the VZ just decides that he wants to get damage into the other tanks, which is understandable. And there's that Char Future 4. He stopped for me. Not today, buddy. Whoa! He nearly shot first there. Did you see the shell just whiz high and left of my tank? And just like that, that was a six-minute game where we have managed to do over 7,000 combined. Spoilers, we go on an absolute wild goose chase all around the map. And the WZ-114 is in pretty much the last place that you would expect a WZ-114 to be in. And that was in the corner. We, we literally just went around the entire map looking for him and he was just right next to us pretty much. We could have just driven <laughs> for about 20 seconds to get him. Oh, look at this. And this is with the, uh, the breach tweaking right now. See how just the magazine feels so clean? Uh, I'm not using vert stabs. And notice how I'm fully aimed easily in between my shots. We put all four rounds into the 114, low rolling every single shot. That was some abysmal rolls. 315 out of 390, 306 out of 390, 341 out of 390, and 330 out of 390. Well, thank goodness it was at the end of the game when it didn't really matter. And boom, we're packing way over 8,000 combined in this sub nine minute round. And upon closer inspection, we actually got some assistance that we didn't see inside the game. So it was nearly 9,000 combined in that sub nine minute round with no gold rounds fired. And the fact that this vehicle has a free large repair kit, we make a decent profit even resupplying the French consumable at full price. And this game was just every reason why I love the Char Future 4. It's got enough scouting capacity with enough flexibility to work a ridgeline with enough firepower to make it feel like that you are not weak with regards to firepower like a light tank is. It's just this amazing mix match of every capacity of the tank that can come together to do some wonders. Now we're going to be rolling out in a nice matchup on Cliff and this time I'm going to be using the vertical stabilizers with this vehicle which is going to massively help our gun handling because on a map like this I really don't need the, the commander's vision system. The only advantage it's going to bring is spotting tanks that are moving because there really aren't too many bushes or at least uh, it, it's fairly obvious 
which bushes your opponents are going to be in if they are. And hopefully being able to, you should be able to blind fire them on a map like Cliff. Okay, so when I'm playing Cliff in a Char Future 4, what's my game plan? Well, I want to try and contest the hill. If I can contest the hill, get up there, I can use my 7.5 degrees of gun depression, and I can really dictate the, uh, the pace on the rest of the map with a vehicle that is very proficient at scouting. Remember, the Char Future 4... When you need to be a light tank, you can be a light tank. When you can be a sniper, you should be a sniper. When you can be an all-in assassin, you should and you can be an all-in assassin. This vehicle is just so darn flexible with regards to the roles that it can pick on the battlefield. And so I think that the Char Future 4 is not the kind of tank that I would recommend for the, the beginners in World of Tanks. But it's definitely something that if you're an experienced player, give it a go and see what it's like. Uh, if you haven't given it a go with all of the field mods as well, I thoroughly recommend investing some time into this tank. And you will be very surprised with what kind of results the vehicle can have. So in that kind of a situation, I'd rather reverse up the slope rather than drive backwards. Because if the Chuff UG4 or the M40-190 came around the corner there and they started shooting me, I've got way more chance of being able to ricochet them with the front of my tank than the back. And this vehicle goes backwards so quickly, uh, it, it's not really too much of a big deal uh, reversing up through that choke point. So in this situation, 30 caught out in the open. Obviously, I've got to be a little bit worried about the boar sig that could be sitting at the back. And in retrospect, this is pretty YOLO of me. I'm sitting in a very precarious situation, although punishing a dangerous tier 9 medium. But if there was anyone up there, they would have surely fired at me in this situation. And it looks like the WZ-111, 1FT and Rheimatal Borsig Waffenträger might still be doing the old base camping tactic, which a lot of players do do. All right, so we managed to keep the 30 from getting involved in the game. We come around the corner, we spot, maybe we spot the Char Future 4, or maybe somebody else managed to catch a glimpse of them. I think it was probably me in this scenario. And I'm lucky that I didn't get spotted. Suggesting that I've got better camera rating and view range than that Char Future 4, which is some knowledge that we can use for later on in this battle. Okay, so in this kind of a scenario, it's just about punishing mistakes. I don't really want to get caught out, but also I want to try and be cheeky and try and get as many shots in as we can. There, the chieftain comes around the corner. We put one shot into them. They want to try and get up on the hill to take the hill away from me, and I don't really want that to be the case. The chieftain now is going to start to engage the IS-3 and the G-Saw down below me. And considering that I haven't really been hit by very many vehicles, I really want to get rid of this chieftain. But if I come around the corner now, I'm risking myself against the char. I'm risking myself against the possible Borsig or the WZ who have managed to get into position. And so what I'm thinking about doing instead is I'm actually trying to bait the, uh, the chieftain up. I'm hoping that they think that I've left. And if they do that, then maybe I can catch a shot here. And it's just about being cheeky. And again, I keep mentioning this the seven and a half degrees of gun depression on this tank you should have like a checklist of how many times i mention it i cannot stress how lovely it feels to be playing a french autoloader that actually has gun depression that isn't like a 50b right uh, think about the 50b with its 10 degrees of gun depression how how that kind of changes the the way that the vehicle feels completely even against something like a, like a t57 heavy for example think about playing when you play the skoda t50 how good that tank feels uh, with its eight degrees of gun depression and this is just where we could just out trade this chieftain i'm lucky that i don't get hit by the uh, wz 111 1 ft i'm gonna fire one blind shot against them as i reverse away I'm not sure that that's a good use of the ammunition in retrospect in this scenario but at least we managed to get rid of the chieftain and I was thinking it was very important to do so because that now allows the IS-3 and the G-Saw to start playing the southeast of this map without the threat of having a British heavy tank uh, oppressing them from above. So I now am in a situation where it's a bit tricky. We've kind of got the cap, but they've got the cap. It's a bit of a no man's land there. There's a conqueror that could be coming up towards the north. And I'm just making sure that I can try and give my team as much information as possible. You see, I pinged the map and I said that there was a WZ spotted in J3. Well, not spotted, but he last shot me from J3. And I'm also telling my team where the self-propelled gun is. Just any kind of information. Because in this scenario, um, it's about waiting, I guess, for the conqueror to make a mistake. I want to reverse here to try and maybe try and get behind this bush. Hopefully we'll be able to do so. But unfortunately, the Borask took a couple of shots at the Conqueror, which means they aren't really looking like they're so comfortable about coming up. 
But if I get a clean shot on the lower plate, I'll take it. And that's where this accuracy just shines. I don't get spotted by the Conqueror, and now we can rip up and tear our way through this ball sick. Hopefully we don't low roll, and we should be able to have this player. Just one more shot, keep the mouse just smoothly going where they are falling backwards. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Hansa 001 in their Rheumatol ball sick. Shut down in three shots. How good does that magazine feel? We don't even really notice the four-second intra-clip reload when we are shooting at po opponents that can't see us. And that's how I feel that you should be playing the Char Future Phil. One, as an all-in assassin against non-autoloaders. And wow, that's a great blind fire there by the WZ. Doesn't quite manage to, uh, to hit my hull armor again, but knocks out my gun. I'm going to use my large repair kit on that. Um, because again, I've made my, uh, my, my gun worse with regards to the, the second field mod on this tank. So you've got to be careful. Uh, with that, with the bloom uh, that you take. But the, just the dream mag for the char, you don't really notice that four seconds intra-clip reload. We put one round into the lower plate of the Conqueror, and we've still got enough in the magazine to be able to take out the entirety of a tier 8 TD. Sure, the Borsig doesn't have the most hit points in World of Tanks, but having like 1,170 damage up your sleeve after you fired one shell at something else just feels sweet. So again... I'm going to keep communicating with my team as to where the uh, the WZ last shot me from. But in this situation, it's about hoping that this 274 or maybe even the char is going to come forwards. And okay, we've got, to, we've got to let the chips fall where they may here. We're going to take some damage, but we're going to hopefully do some damage as well. We bounce the first shot from the char, the armor really paying off. And that allows us to be able to shut down the enemy char. And then hope that we're going to go through the top of the, ch uh, the Conqueror turret as well. We do... We take a hit from the AMX, we take a little splash from the artillery, and now we know it's safe to reload in this situation. And uh, still good health traits, I'd say, all in all. A kill on a char and 400 damage extra to the Conqueror. I think it's it's okay. And this is really where you get to the situation where it's not enough to play like a sniper anymore, and you have to start making trades with your HP. In this situation, I'm actually switching to heat here, and the reason why I was switching to heat is for the top of the Conqueror turret. But hopefully it's still going to work on the WZ. Um, I actually asked my team, char reload, question mark. I don't even know why I said that in all honesty. Um, is it a different char that I'm talking about in this scenario? Or maybe there's even a light tank. Maybe I'm confused. I can't even think what Uncle Quacky Babs was thinking there. But what I am thinking now is that with one less tank on the enemy team, this two versus six situation is now down to a two versus five. So I'm going to reload again got to press my reload key and it's just now about trying to get off the hill because what are we going to do if we sit up on the hill all of their guns are going to be aiming at us and how are we ever going to be able to remove people from the cap circle when it's directly below us if i go and perch over the the ledge maybe i can try and use some of the bushes it is precarious to say the least and oh wow it actually looks like the enemy team is going to come towards us so I was thinking about running away there, but no, the Conqueror is going after the Borask. So hopefully I can just go and perch over here and start to go to town on that guy's turret. But actually, it looks like it's 274A time. Ah, oh, man, we managed to just take a chunk out of the pillar instead of hitting the, the Soviet medium tank there. Luckily for us, it looks like the Conqueror actually lost half of their hit points going down the slope. We still got three heat rounds remaining. And I'm just trying to fake out what I'm doing here, but I really do want to get rid of the 274A. If I can get rid of the 274A, that's another angle that my opponents don't have on me. And even though I've got seven and a half degrees of gun depression, oh, that slope, that was that was not clean play there. I should have just gone here, gone into position, and shot down the AMX 65T. And they didn't even see us until we fired. That 30% camera rating when moving, just rocking and rolling. And it looks like the Conqueror actually just overturned their vehicle. But oh my goodness, that was a tilter as I fail to manage to penetrate the 274A with a heat round. But I'm not going to reload because I won't have enough time to be able to reload a full mag before I go after the M4Y here. But luckily the Borask shuts down the, um, the Object 274A and the artillery narrowly misses me. And I've got 20 seconds left to interrupt this cap circle. But again, my magazine is big enough. I'll just tank one shot, take my time, make sure I get a nice clean shot into the side of their angled hull there. And now I can reload to be able to go after the artillery as we do pick up a top gun. And this replay, uh, I'm showing it for a couple of reasons. 
one of them predominantly, is the fact that the char just feels as if it's quite a resilient and flexible medium tank. And many autoloaders in the game do feel as if they're more like glass cannons. And this game really, for me, showed the char under pressure. And it showed the char um, just how flexible it can be in a situation and how much resilience it has to be able to handle it. So I pinged the map to let me know where the artillery is. I'm wondering if I should go and maybe try and use some of the bushes. But there doesn't really feel like there's too many bushes in this location that I can be able to use. So I'm going to go and try and use the positions over here. And I'm actually going to swing round. And I should be safe to not get spotted at this kind of a distance with my 30% camo. And I can swing round if I don't manage to spot him. And then I can go make my way into one of these bushes over here. And we've got four minutes left. Just less than four minutes left to be able to find this SU-14 too. And with the game on the line, the last thing that I want to do is get splashed here. Shouldn't have really knocked down that pillar. If he was eagle-eyed, he might have been able to catch me here. And now I'm surprised. I don't know. So I ping where the SU last was. and He's got to be there, right? Looks like he moves. He's a little bit of a misplay there, but he was probably changing his angle, thinking about where he could get me. And luckily, I don't low roll, which allows us to shut down the Soviet self-propelled gun and take down just an all-round awesome carry with seven kills. And this thing, it picks up the kills, that's for sure. Even though it has a long intraclip reload time, even though it has fairly poor damage per minute, it just doesn't seem to stop the vehicle from doing the business. And uh, I don't want this to just be like a love story of the Char Future 4, but I really felt like I wanted to highlight this tank. It's not just a vehicle for you pay to win players out there. It's actually really quite good for anyone who is kind of free to play as well. Because you kind of have to put coated optics on this tank unless you want to put bond vents and use a premium consumable and have an amazing crew. And it kind of does just as well free to play as as pay to win because you can't improve that intraclip reload. Combine that with the fact that it gets a free large repair kit as well, which you never have to pay for, can seriously improve the economy of this vehicle for all you free-to-play players. And the result from this game on Cliff was a tank sniper, defender, high caliber, and a top gun medal for our 1,368 base experience. I did fire some heat rounds here, however, so I did end up losing credits after we resupplied consumables at full price. But it was our third mark of excellence for the Char Future 4. And considering that this is a very easy tank to get for everyone inside the Battle Pass, and I do expect um, when the, the Battle Pass has probably come back in February or March, that it will make a return inside the shop. This ends up being one of my most recommended tanks that you can be able to get from the Battle Pass. And I think the best way to sum up the Char Future 4 is that it's pretty much all of the kind of fun gameplay of the Bat Chat 25T at a more fun tier, tier 9, where it's not all tier 10 matchmaking. And really, when you compare how similar these vehicles are statistically, with the charges being a whole tier lower, with much less competitive tanks that it has to fight against, it's a no-brainer why the Char Future 4 just feels like a fun bat chat a decade after it was first introduced into the game. And if you want another example of recent Char Future 4 gameplay from the channel, then I have a video discussing why this is arguably my new favorite tank as well. So go check that one out. And this game was possibly one of my best of 2022. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this masterclass video. If you did and you want to see more of these, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, however, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what equipment do you take for your two setups on the Char Future 4. And do you love this tank as much as I do? Or are you struggling to make it work? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.